Hello, welcome back to another virtual video from home for the community kitchen. Today we're gonna be working with flour. We're gonna be making a dough. We're gonna, uh, it's a focaccia dough. It's an uh, Italian recipe uh, for bread that's topped with with cheese or vegetables or whatever you like. Uh, so let's start with it. So this is I have here. Uh, two and three quarter cups of uh, flour. It could be unbleached, preferably, could be whole wheat, um, any kind of flour you prefer to use is fine. Uh, for uh, this amount, we're gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt. Obviously salt is uh, something uh, also that if you like it less, you like it more, but half a teaspoon would be uh, on the less side, I would say. Um, to that, we're gonna be adding uh, some uh, olive oil, a tablespoon of olive oil. Again, you could use other oils too. It's not uh, gonna make much of a difference, but uh, you know, the flavor in olive oil is uh, very complimentary to, to flour, to breads. Okay, so here in this bowl, I have, uh, for the sake of time, I had to start a little ahead. I have a cup of warm water, a tablespoon of um, uh, active yeast, like a fast active yeast, and a teaspoon of uh, sugar. You could also add honey instead of the sugar if you would like to. It's been sitting for about five minutes, so you, as you can see, it's starting to proof here. Uh, so it's ready to be incorporated into the uh, mix. Uh, another thing I would like to add here is, uh, it's it's optional but it's a mix of dry herbs like Italian uh, seasoning would be uh, would work well or any dry herbs you have you have dry basil dry oregano thyme um, any of the uh, uh, rosemary is great uh, any of those would work whatever you have in your pantry would be nice or whatever you love the taste of so we mix it all together and then make a little one in the middle we add our cup of proof peas and with a spoon we could start mixing until we see that the dough is starting to come together. Once it does, we could then put it on the board and knead it a little bit so it will get smooth and all the flour be incorporated into the mix. So it's almost there. Okay, so now we can. flour because we're gonna need that flour to get to the right consistency and we're gonna depending on the temperature in the room the kind of flour of using sometimes you need less or a little bit less uh, and a little bit more uh, moisture in it so so we go now to the folding in the, the dough like that a little bit of flour as you go until you have a nice smooth dough it's better to take it easy on the flour so you won't get a tough dough so you put little at little, little by little as needed, and you could put it in your bowl like this. Well, this process here will take maybe about 10 minutes of kneading or a little less, depending on the amount you're working with. And the flour, like I said, makes a big difference. Okay, so starting to look good. 
but it will need you see it's still a little rough so the same technique all over turn around fold turn around fold okay so so this is okay now Could need it a little longer, or you could just stop right here. So this is our dough now. What we have to do is gonna, we're gonna. You could just leave it on the board, cover it. It's gonna take at least half an hour to an hour to proof to double in size uh, before you are able to use it. What I'm gonna do here, I have here a mix of olive oil, a fresh. Um, rosemary and fresh um, garlic and uh, fresh oregano mixed together and a little little touch of salt so i'm gonna put a tablespoon or a little bit more here at the bottom of the i bring it here so you can see now why i'm doing that so there's the beef flavor all over you'll be flavor instead of just putting the flavor on top of the bread you'll have now the herbs inside it and you have more flavor at the bottom of the bread now like i said i can leave it on the board cover it and leave it or put it in a in a greased bowl or i just put it straight into the, the tray here cover it 30 minutes to an hour max it should be proof, doubled in size, and then we'll come back and we'll finish it. See you soon. Okay, so now that the uh, dough has risen, I, I started putting some of the uh, herb mix here and we're gonna start spreading it. You see how it doubled in size? And this is what you wanna see. So you go like this, all around until it fills the tray. You could add more of this herb. It's really flavorful, gives it a lot of taste. And like this. And you could add fresh, uh, thinly sliced fresh tomatoes, fresh zucchini. Um, today I'm doing it with sun dried tomatoes and black olives. So, what you have to do, you just start sticking the tomatoes in the dough like that. I'm not going to add, usually this sprinkle some salt on top, like, uh, you know, sea salt, like coarse salt usually goes really well with it. But because of that tomato, the sun-dried tomatoes are salty and so is the black olives, I'm, I'm going to skip this uh, the salt for that reason. Otherwise, if you're not using, if you're using like tomatoes, like I said, or fresh zucchini or stuff like that, then you could for sure... So now we're gonna finish this. I'm gonna, ideally you'd let it rest for another 20 minutes before you bake it. But if you bake it at this point, it will still be okay, but it will rise more and will be more, uh, it has more uh, like pockets in the inside, it makes it more bubbly. So yeah, that's it. We're gonna bake it at 400 degrees now until it's nice and golden brown and we'll be back. Okay, so this is our final uh, product here. Our focaccia with rosemary, sun-dried tomatoes and black olives. Uh, you could enjoy it with a, with a bowl of soup or with a, beside your pasta and instead of your garlic bread or you could even slice it in half, stuff it, make it into a sandwich. It's very versatile, very uh, nice for gatherings and um, it will freeze well. So um, I hope you give it a try and uh, I will see you soon. Thank you for watching.